Hello. Today what we're going to look at is formatting and adding content to your home page. I'm going to use as a test for this the one we just worked on. I've got five JPEG images here that I brought in. I created a number of indexes, title index, two A to Z ones, uh, director's index, actor's index, and a hierarchy one for subject and keywords. And if we take a look at this uh, one, we see there's a banner and here's our index here. Now the problem with this collection is here, when someone arrives on it, what do they see? Well, people will scan this. The banner helps. They get to know that it's a winner of Oscar, <coughs> excuse me, Oscar winners. And uh, But there's not a lot here. Now two parts here we can fix. One is this, this automatically generated about this collection. This is called about text. Here's where we should say what the collection is, what it has in it, who's it for. It also has this automatically generated how to find information. So what we're going to do today is show you how to add your own information to this here. We're not going to be concerned with the style parts, the green stuff and the menu and the search stuff. We're going to do all that later. But what we're going to do now is how do you add information here to let people know what your collection is. This is done in the GLI by clicking Format, Collection Specific Macros, and here is this large text area box where you can add stuff. Um, the hash mark things are comments. We can keep them where we don't need them. Now what it works is, is there are packages. The instructions go within packages. For example, there's a package called style. And you notice there's a style tag, just like in all uh, that in HTML pages. This allows us to put style in that will apply to all pages. We'll do a little bit of that today. But we can add other packages that apply to specific packages. So let me put the packages in. Okay, what I've typed in is two things. Package global, so any instructions down here is going to apply to all my pages, and package about. What goes in here is going to apply to the about page, which is the home page. The about page is this thing here. This is the about page. You notice it has a thing up here that says where you are, you're on the about page. So. And I've also just formatted this a little bit. So the way it works is there's a Greenstone macro, which has an underscore, some text and an underscore, that's the name. There's a squiggly bracket, and then whatever was inside the squiggly bracket is the instructions. So I'm going to add some things here to allow me to format my home page. I'm not going to worry about global today, I just wanted to show you there's one in there that will override things, but uh, really package about is what I'm going to use. I'm not going to use the JavaScript to add any behavior modifying code. I'm just going to use package about today. Now the first thing that goes in package about, you can define a content macro. Oops, I forgot to do underscore content underscore, right? And then I'm going to use a squiggly bracket. So what goes in the content one is everything that's going to be the content for your page. And I'm going to define that content is going to consist of two things on my about page. Navigation. You need a menu, so the navigation bar is the macro for the menu, and text about is the text or content that goes on your home page to describe who's it about, what's it for. So that's the first part that I want. Package about is going to contain this content macro uh, defined by these two things. Now again, I can format this a little bit by indenting it so I can see. It's important to keep this clean so that you know what's going on. Okay, so what I've got is content navigation bar, that's the menu bar, and text about. Now, I haven't defined anything things for these, so this is now going to overwrite. Now, I've also, because I've changed this, certain things are not going to get included. I'll show you what it's going to do. I'm going to click on preview. Woo, you say, that's different. It is. You notice this here, which is called div bar, has disappeared because I didn't say to include it. The navigation bar has a certain look to it. One of the things is it takes your menus and um, transforms them to be all lowercase. You may not like that. When I have, and it also puts a search thing. By doing this, I've now put these back to no div bar, no green nav bar type location, and they're now all uppercase. The search function is gone. Now I still got about this collection, which was fine, and I have 
the default information I put in when I create the collection. Obviously, I want to put in more. So we've got changed some things by removing some other stuff. Now, later on, we'll show you how to remove this. I'll do that next week, I think, and how to do some of this other green bits. So it's quite different than what we had. Now, what we have to do is add some information that says what this is about. So let's now, back in the GLI on Format, Collection Specific Macros, I've created one called Text About. So it's going to define what this is. Now, you notice there's a squiggly bracket to start and a squiggly bracket to end. And what I'm going to put inside here is both my content, the text, and some HTML tags that are going to format it a little bit. Or tell it what things are, paragraph, headers, stuff like that. Then up here in the style, I'm going to define what that's going to look like. So let's put some content. Okay, I have typed in some text, explains the thing. I say this collection contains best picture winners, it's designed for film historians, enthusiasts, students. Uh, I tell how you can search, what you can search for. Uh, the browsable indexes, title, director, actor, date. Uh, what you get, full record, movie poster, list of actors, links to reviews, embedded movie trailer, capsule summary from Leonard Malton, rank in the top 100. And of course I've uh, copied and pasted some text in just to make it look realistic uh, about what the Best Picture Award is. So this is the content. Now what the next thing to do is to tag this up to indicate what it is and also add a little bit of style to uh, make it look nice. Okay, my first go around is to tag all the paragraphs with paragraph tags, right? So they look like paragraphs. And I thought I'd add an image. Uh, I haven't downloaded one, so I'm going to use a URL. Uh, and I searched Google Images and found a picture of the Oscar. So I put it in, I've aligned it to the right, I put in height and width tags, and what this looks like, if we take a look, it's going to look something like this. So we've got a nice picture here. Now one of the problems with this is the text is too wide. Uh, on a computer screen it's really hard to read text that has long sentences. It's better to make your sentences choppier. So we could do that maybe by uh, moving this in a little bit or uh, not making them so wide or converting into columns. Okay, I finished my text about stuff. What I've done is create a number of Tupperware containers called divs. And this allows me to position things on a screen. We could also have done use tables. Tables will work, though tables were designed for tabular data and not for layout, even though they can be used that way. So first I created a div and I gave it a name of content and I made it 600 pixels wide. Uh, I put a div which has nothing in it except a little white space to give me some distance from my menu. Then I created a div here that's going to contain the text. You notice here's my three text paragraphs. And what I've done here is just made this uh, 400 pixels wide. I've given a little bit of a margin of three M spaces and I've floated it to the left. Now, uh, so that is my first text part. Then the second div I've created here just contains my image, my picture of Oscar. And I've made this the size of my image. So it's 300 pixels by 100 pixels and it's floating to the left. And then I've added a little bit more content down here, just one more paragraph, um, Grand Staircase. If I take a look at it, this is what it looks like. So, so again, that gives me a little bit of white space beneath the menu, nice. I've got an image over here. My text isn't quite as long. Long text slides are hard to read. And so this makes it nice. Now I'm still gonna need a footer at the bottom, but I'll put that in. And when I disappear this, I won't do it today, we'll do the next week, we'll have white space at this side. So it'll look very attractive. I could probably have indented it a bit more this way, but I could fiddle with that later. Okay, now we wanna do next. Okay, the last thing I've done is to add a final div for my footer. So I've created an ID at the bottom, I've named it footer. I've uh, aligned the text to the center. I've made the font smaller, small, because uh, it doesn't need to be large. I've made it italic. And then I put an HR in, and I have this section contains. The About Numleaf docs will automatically update for however documents are on the collection. The About Build Date macro will update for whenever I've rebuilt it. So this is useful information for the user. So if I take a look at what that does, here we are. So there's our horizontal line, here's our little div, some nice white space for it, and there's our thing. So starting to look all right. We've got what the collection's about, we have some branding, we have a banner up here, we could use a little bit better banner, but that's start. Um, 
uh, graphic and what it's done. So this is not a bad start to letting us, uh, the users know what there is in the collection. Now there's a lot more we can do to make this look pretty, but that's a little farther on. So this is one thing you want to do for the next assignment, is have your collection contain, it doesn't have to look as pretty as this, but contain what this is, who's it for, and what you can do.